But the background of this story is that Sarah Winchester, the granddaughter of the inventor of the Winchester rifle in the United States, who inherited the vast fortunes that were generated from that, um, uh, bought a house in San Jose, San, uh, San Jose, California, which was a quarter of the house it is today, um, with a plan to continue to expand it. However, um, she started to get uh, um, a lot of bad dreams, so I won't negatively uh, put it upon her. I, I was going to say she started to go slightly batty, but that's uh, me uh, putting my judgment on her. Uh, but uh, for the last 35 years of her life, uh, she was afflicted, let's use that word, by dreams uh, that the ghosts of anyone who was killed by her father's uh, rifles were out to get her. As a consequence, basically, depending on the dream she'd had the night before, let's say the ghost came down the chimney, she'd wake up and she'd tell the, the builders to please change that chimney, the ghosts are getting me through there, or they came through that door last night. Effectively, what she did for 36 years is change the design for the house every day, depending on the dream she had the night before. Um, now, as a result, after those, it's actually 38 years, not 36 years, She'd spent 5.5 US million dollars. That's in 1896 dollars, about the equivalent of 500 million dollars in today's money, a third of the family fortune. Um, and she built a rather interesting house. There is uh, store staircases that go nowhere. There are fireplaces with no chimneys, chimneys with no fireplaces. There are bedrooms you can't get to. An entire half of the um, the um, to say attic but the other one uh, basement uh, is is completely unaccessible anymore um, my favorite couple of things when i went to visit is you know you go and lie on this beautiful four uh, four poster bed that's glorious and you lie back and you look up through a glass ceiling to the toilets above and um, which not a particular pleasant experience if anyone decided to go to the toilet in the middle of the night for you um, or even that last one at the end it says that the kitchens with gravity defying plumbing so you know, after about 25 years of doing this, the builders had realized that it didn't really matter if it worked or not, because she was probably going to change her mind next week. And um, so, you know, they have um, sinks where the waste pipe goes down vertically, across horizontally, then up vertically to the roof, like there was any chance that was going to work if anybody ever turned the taps on. Um, so the result, basically, as a, as a, this is a very messy house. <laughs> that uh, is not really a house you can live in. Um, our point really here is we'd never do this with our homes and constantly change our plan for our house every day, depending on sort of dreams we had before. We all go when we're building a house or designing a house with a vision for what the house looks like. You know, we know where the kitchen's going to be, we know where the bedrooms are going to be, you know, where we need bathrooms, etc. Yet when it comes to designing business and IT systems, we actually don't do this. We just make a decision every day based upon an individual project without a vision for what the overall house, in this case, the overall business and IT is gonna look like. Um, as a consequence, we end up with IT systems that are a bit like Winchester House, with rooms you can't get to, we're not even sure how they work. There are parts of systems we're not sure they're used anymore, et cetera. Um, so really, although we might continue to do it, it's not going to end up with a, a decent outcome for the business. We are going to end up with the IT equivalent of Winchester House. A um, couple of pictures here for you really to look at it uh, to your own leisure. And uh, later on, you know, there's a couple of uh, staircases that go over to a door that just opens to a black wall. As you can see, there's a door you just open and fall straight out of onto the, <laughs> onto the roof if you wish to. And that's just one of many interesting anomalies in the house. So the point really here we're making is, is you know, if you don't have an overall vision for your business and IT systems, which is what enterprise architecture gives you, then you're likely just to, to build a Winchester house. You're likely to build a very uncoherent house. So that's the story for many of you. There is a movie called Winchester, which if you want to go and have a look at, you can have a look at, but the Winchester, the, the movie is much more focused on the, uh, the ghost story part of it than the actual architecture. Pretty boring movie, we just talked about house architecture. But for those of you who've heard it before, a late breaking edition, which we subsequently uh, discovered actually only about two months ago. Um, so what? What if they had have had an architect? What did it do? Well, it's somewhere we discovered, uh, actually I was watching a documentary about this place and discovered this place in Scotland. Just trying to get my thing to move on, which didn't seem to want to do. I'll do it that way, press the bottom at the bottom. Um, 
Okay, so this place is actually in, in Scotland, in Northern Scotland. As it turns out, almost exactly the same 38 year time frame. A few years either side, but broadly exactly the same, the last 30 years of, of the 19th century, 1873 to 1896. Um, a rather wealthy gentleman in England um, decided to build uh, what's now one of the highest tourist attractions in all of the UK. It's in Northern Scotland um, and it's uh, called Mount Stuart House. He spent almost exactly the same amount of money, $500 million, uh, just as the lady Sarah Winchester built. But in contrast to building a uh, somewhat messy place, as a result of actually having an architect, and the gentleman himself, by the way, the third Marquis of Booth, is generally described as uh, the best amateur architect who ever lived. He did employ a professional architect, but it was his personal passion as well. So he was deeply involved in the design. But the point I make that is it kind of helps if your CEO is an architect. It doesn't happen very often, but uh, if your CEO is also passionate about architecture as COO, it, it does make life a lot easier for us as EAs. Uh, but he had it built as an architect and built a world-class house. Actually, it, is the, it was the first house in the world to have full electricity, the first indoor swimming pool, first house to have an indoor uh, lift. And Sarah Winchester could have had all of those beautiful things in her house as well if she bothered to employ an architect and actually and, and not just go straight to the build. Which again is our other point we're trying to make here is that, you know, don't jump straight into builds. You know, one of our most frustrating statements as architects is, you know, why isn't somebody coding yet? Um, well, that's a dangerous thing to dive straight into building without understanding what you're actually trying to build and what you're trying to achieve. And that's the core value of, of both enterprise and solution architecture is to give that clarity over, over the design of the building and what we're trying to achieve. What is the intent? What are the outcomes we're trying to achieve by this building or in our case, this IT system? So you can see some beautiful pictures there. Um, actually, that bookcase there, it, it, if you can see the one in the second to the... To, to the left and the top right. Um, one of those is a secret door. That bookcase actually opens to a secret door that leads to the master bedroom. And that is the only way of getting to the master bedroom in the entire building. So it's, it's particularly fascinating. Uh, for those who does, I will send you a link to the documentary on this house if you're interested in seeing the other side. Really, we wanted a contrast here. Same amount of money spent, one with an architect, one without. Without, you ended up in a bit of a spaghetti mess. With an architect, you ended up in one of the world's leading buildings with for the same amount of money.